Okay, so pretty much in every single one of your careers, whether you're a data analyst, whether you're a data engineer, or you're a data scientist, you're going to come to a point or a junction in your career where you have to make a choice. And it's a conscious choice, but sometimes we're not really informed when we make it. And that choice is regarding whether you become a senior or a technical lead, or you move down the road of management. So within this video, I want to lay out some of the facts around what does it mean being a senior? What's the benefit of being a senior? Or what's the path to leadership look like? And what are the sort of challenges or interesting things that you can do as a leader? So to start off with, you've been a data analyst for the last couple of years. Now let's explore that first sort of path you could come across, which is becoming from data analyst to senior data analyst. This sort of route is ideal for the people that wish to deepen their expertise in the technical aspects of data analytics or engineering, whichever discipline you're thinking about. It involves sort of mastering techniques like visualization or becoming highly skilled in certain types of tools, such as Power BI, Tableau or Looker, for example and even possibly pushing that boundary and moving into sort of machine learning and or more sophisticated analytical techniques. Taking on the senior technical role involves mastering four key elements. First, you will become the organization's go-to lead for all things analytics. Secondly, you're gonna establish yourself as the authority within the team, guiding them and then setting the standard for data visualization. Thirdly, it's your responsibility to deliver best practices and ensure that they are implemented consistently across the department. Finally, you are going to focus on making sure that you're the specialist and that involves continually improving and deepening your expertise and driving the technical direction with innovative frameworks and tools as they progress. Okay. So what makes this appealing? Well, for starters, you remain closely engaged with the data. And that's a huge draw for most of us who love working with data and being in analytics or engineering, whatever specialism, it's a huge draw. And again, you can lead on impactful projects that throughout your organization make decisions happen. The third thing I would think of is tackling the more complex problems that you have. You don't get to do that if you're in leadership. You're not actually there to deal with complex problems. You're there to deal more with management, people, politics, essentially. And then finally, probably the most important one that I think the seniors enjoy probably the most is learning that new technology. You're never going to stagnate if you're the senior because you have to stay ahead of the curve. So you have to go out learning new technologies, learning new techniques, learning new ways of working. Those are the four areas I think that really settle this as sort of a career choice for most people. So whenever you make a decision, what I've shown you so far is all the positives and what you can do and how you feel and the emotive side of it. But there are considerations that you need to think about. For me, the two major considerations you have to think about is that when you're at the top, when you're the technical lead, everybody turns to you. Now, you will have good leaders, you will have good managers that you'll be able to turn to yourself, but it can be quite a siloed venture because now everyone's coming to you for that as that authority. They quite, it can, it's a bit of a challenge for some people, but some people thrive with it, some people don't. It's something you need to consider that now you're not part of the rest of the analysts. You're not part of the uh, junior analysts. You are now the person they go to and someone that you've always had in your career, now you're that person. So it's something you need to consider. Obviously, the other side of it is the financial aspect. In reality, you will earn a good money as a senior data person, whether that's analyst, engineer, scientist, whatever. But you won't earn as much as a chief data officer. I'm not saying you're going to earn bad wages here. I'm basically stating out the fact that there is a limit and a ceiling to what you can financially earn unless you go contracting. But even that, Again, if you're a leader, you will probably earn more in the contracting space. So these are the major constraints or considerations that you probably would want to think about before making that decision. On the other hand, there's the management path. This option is about stepping away from the day-to-day -day technical work and to focus on people management and leadership. So it's about 
leading a team of analysts, providing guidance, support, and fostering their professional growth. So what you're trying to do is build the next senior data analyst. You're building the next analyst. You're building the next leader. They're your replacement, essentially. And you're going to be responsible for setting the team's direction, aligning their efforts with a broader business sense and broader business goals, and ensuring that the team's motivated and productive. This path in itself is ideal for those who are sort of passionate about mentorship and team development. It's a chance to have a broader impact on the organization by creating and cultivating a high-performing team and shaping the future of an analytical function or engineering function. When we think of leadership, there's four key elements I want to talk to you about. Same as what I did with the sort of the technical role. There's many more. I'm sure I'll cover them off in other videos. The first one I'm going to talk to you about is strategic vision. Now you moved into leadership, you're responsible for setting the direction and aligning the team's efforts with the broader goals of the organization. It involves sort of seeing the bigger picture, making long-term decisions, steering the team away from doing pointless tasks and moving them into impactful outcomes. Secondly, and it's probably the one that I'm most passionate about, and that's team development. Leadership is about empowering others to do great things. It is not about you telling them what to do. It's just not. And if you are doing that, please stop being a leader. Please retire, move on, go do something else because you are not a leader. You're, you're just not. I'm, I'm going to have to do more videos on that, I think. Your job is to help your team's skills grow. Your team is to help them grow personally. You've got to provide them guidance sometimes. You've got to ensure that they're equipped to succeed in their jobs and in their roles, not just for today, not just for next month, not six months, next year. You've got to be there to make sure that they can be the best that they can be. And sometimes it's about growing them to a point where they have to move on to another company. There's nothing wrong with that. Your job is there to empower them, to create the next generation of talent. Um, I'll move on. I could go on about that for hours. But number three is operational efficiency. Your job is now to make sure that they work effectively and efficiently. That includes sort of creating workflows, managing resources, getting rid of, rid of obstacles that kind of slow them down. It's about making sure that your team deliver high quality work on time and to the required standard. What it doesn't mean is actually tell them to deliver the impossible. Moving on to number four, which is stakeholder management. A key aspect of leadership itself is managing relationships with stakeholders. It includes sort of communicating that progress. It's not going to them on day of release and saying, oh, it's going to be another delay for two weeks. You should have done that way before. It includes sort of gathering input from other senior management, ensuring that the analytics functions support the needs of the business. There's no point having one if they don't, if they can't support the business. Effective leaders balance these relationships to ensure alignment and success. There are four key elements. There's many more. I'm definitely going to have to do some more videos on this. But let's think about something else. Okay, so becoming a leader, what's the things you should think about? What's the positives of being a leader? Well, number one is impact and influence. So as a leader, you have the ability to shape the direction of your team and sort of make decisions that have long lasting impact on the organization that you work in. You can sort of influence and drive positive change, innovation, success, not just for your team, but for the broader business areas that you work with. I think personal and professional growth is important. It's something that leadership challenges you to develop new skills, sort of communication, strategic thinking, problem solving. It's a powerful opportunity to sort of grow both personally and professionally, pushing you to continually learn and improve. <laughs> Probably the one I'm most passionate about is empowering others. One of the most rewarding aspects of leadership is helping others succeed. By mentoring and guiding your team, you'll foster their growth and development and seeing them achieve their potential is just euphoric sometimes. It's, it, I can't really describe the feeling of that. And finally, when it comes to sort of increased responsibility and recognition, when you're a leader, 
you've got to take on more responsibility. You're responsible for the team that you work with. You're responsible for sort of aspects of an organization now. It's not just the work that you do. It's a work that a group of people do and the wider impact that it has. With that sort of uh, responsibility comes recognition for that and the sort of your contributions to that, along with opportunities to sort of further advance in the organization or your own career or in other leadership roles. So there are four things I think that really drive leaders or should drive good leaders into this sort of space rather than a technical role. When you're a leader, you have to take certain things into consideration. It's not all plain sailing. It's not just standing on a stage talking about how great things are. It's not about uh, telling people how great they are or giving them empowerment. There are aspects of it, but there are considerations. The first one that I want you to think about is tough decisions. Number one, when you have to let somebody go, that's a really tough decision. It's quite a, a big burden on yourself. These are things we don't talk about, by the way, as leaders. We don't talk about those tough sort of decision making or when there's budget cuts and you have to make redundancies. These are kind of things that we don't really talk about, but it's something that you need to think about. Along with those tough decisions, there are things around your emotional toll that leadership can take. If you're a good leader, again, this is all about being a good leader, right? It's not about being a rubbish leader. If you're a good leader, you take on the emotional burden of your team. I don't mean their personal burdens. I mean, when it comes down to internal conflict, when it comes down to making those decisions, when it comes down to pressure, you have to take that away from your team. And that's quite a difficult thing to do for some people. Some leaders, I've seen it before, where they get asked tough questions or they get pressure and they immediately put that pressure on the team. That's not good leadership. And that's something you need to consider about. And I wouldn't want you to become a leader if that's your first port of call is to shift it, the burden onto your team. You have to take that burden. The next one is around internal politics. It does happen in every organization. It's not something that doesn't happen in places. It does. And it's kind of a game that you have to learn as you go through your career. And nobody gives you any guidance on it because everybody says it doesn't exist. But it does, unfortunately. Some organizations less so. But it does happen in every organization. And again, that takes an emotional toll on you because you have to constantly think not just about how efficient your team are. If your team are efficiently de delivering all the time, yet there's somebody trying to undermine you because they want to gain further influence within the organization, that's tough to deal with. So these are the two major considerations I would probably put up there when you're thinking about becoming a leader. So which path is right for you? I guess, really, it ultimately depends on where your passions lie and sort of what skills you want to develop. Do you find satisfaction in deep technical problem solving and becoming sort of that subject matter expert? Or do you feel more fulfilled when mentoring others and leading a team towards success? Now, both paths have their merits and can lead to sort of rewarding careers. The important thing is to choose one that aligns with your strengths and your professional goals. Now, whichever path you choose, Remember that this is your journey to shape. So thank you for watching. If you face a similar decision or are currently weighing up your options, share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the icon bell for more content. And until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep growing.